Welcome back. This is day two of our Zoom lesson. Uh, I promised you a watercolor demo of a wine bottle and a glass, so that's coming. First of all, um, I think the theme today would be learning to see. Because if you see it, you can paint it. That's my theory. Um, our inspiration for today is uh, the Impressionist. And this is a really fun painting by Renoir. Um, and I, I chose it because, for one thing, it's like happy hour. Uh, so we're having a wine bottle and wine glass painting today, which will be a happy hour in isolation. Um, and this, I show you, I have a close-up of his wine bottles. And I want you to notice that um, that they are very, um, there's a lot of contrast between light and dark, and um, we, it's just what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to save the highlights so it'll look like glass. Um, there's some other ones here. Here's a really nice one by uh, Cezanne. Cezanne, of course, is more into shape than Renoir, but um, he also saved the highlights. And then here's another uh, Cezanne um, wine bottle. Then I have some of mine, because I love painting wine bottles. This is um, a watercolor, um, but notice the highlights. The highlights are the white paper. And then the other one, this is an oil, but it, the highlights are the same. So really focus on the highlights uh, and the darks. Yeah, this is the last one. I love this because you can see through the bottle. <clears throat> so it was in France. Um, but the glass also has highlights, okay? So then now we're going to be looking at um, our painting that we're going to be, all of us are going to be doing this one. Notice the highlights, and um, I have um, uh, some pictures for you of the viewfinder um, and the um, thumbnail sketch that I did. The first thing, of course, is the viewfinder. Um, so we're going to find your composition, because a good composition will paint itself. We have a one-minute thumbnail sketch. And when you look through the viewfinder for about 30 seconds, just find the composition that you like and focus on it and let it impress itself in your brain. Because when you allow that moment to, to appreciate the beauty of something that you're seeing, I think it registers and affects the outcome of your painting. I always picture when I find something I really like, beautiful color, gorgeous value, nice shapes, then I picture how it will be when it's hanging in the museum with a frame. That's how beautiful it can be through that viewfinder. Um, so let's look at the thumbnail sketch. And it's just a quick one minute thing. You look through the viewfinder and you pick a composition. I've already composed it for you with the photo, but um, you get used to the idea. So the thumbnail sketch shouldn't take more than a minute. And what's so exciting is that if you really look at it and, and appreciate the beauty of the color and the values and all of that, the highlights, um, you will, it will impress it on your brain. And then when you, start, when you start to paint, it's like you have an image of something that you're trying to get. And I believe that if you um, see it, you can paint it. So worth finding a good composition. That's what the viewfinder is about. And the next step, step two, is you make your little um, value study so that you are learning to see light, medium, and dark value. Because when you start painting, that is, color, color still has value. So when you don't know quite what to do, you just squint your eye and see the value, the relative value of something that you've just painted. Because you'll see in my demo, I keep saying, oh, that's too dark, oh, that's not dark enough. Um, and then we can get into talking about and seeing warm and cool color. The value study is seeing the, the contrast in your, um, between light and dark in your composition. Um, so notice that this is the same thing as, as before. I want you to see the light, medium, and dark values. And the light value in this case is definitely the highlights and the bottle. Very, very so the next thing, after the value study, we're going to draw the bottle, the bottle and the glass. And 
it really does take time. Um, we learn patience because you're not going to be happy if your bottle isn't strong or steady or, or solid or straight. Um, so, th so think about the bottle. First of all, you'll see in this drawing that I'm going to show you. Um, it's notice that it's a cylinder. It's two cylinders, actually. The big cylinder of the base of the bottle and the small cylinder of the neck of the bottle. And when I, when I was drawing it, I kept thinking, how can I help you? Um, so you'll, you'll have a bottle that you can paint. So it's important that um, it's the same on both sides. Kind of like, it's hard to get it the same on both sides. So what I've done over the years, I've taught myself to put a line down the, mark, the, the middle, and that way I can compare the size on both sides of the line and make them as close as I can. And then the next thing, once you get the cylinders and the, um, put the line down, then start putting in the eclipses, the, the, the wine, the top of the wine, the, the, the labels, they all, they, all run, they all run around like drawing through. You draw around the object, and then you put straight lines where the labels are. You'll see the drawing is pretty expensive. Um, and then what do we do? We draw the bottle. Oh, and then the glass. The glass, and as you saw in the um, in the examples <coughs> of Renoir and Cezanne and even Marguerite, the white highlights are so so important. And in this. Uh, watercolor, you have to save the white paper. So you'll see that in the drawing, there's a lot of little squares where the highlights will be. <clears throat> and that's it. So I think that's about it. And I, even though it's going to take some time to draw this on, the bottle and the wine and the shapes of the shadows on the table, oh, one must, I think I must remind you, the reason that we are focusing on still life is because I believe that's the way to learn to paint. Everybody wants to paint, um, you know, the grand Tetons or something, but it's, it's really easier for you to paint something that doesn't move around a lot. And you'll see in the demo, I got so excited because the light was coming through the window and it was changing, and I said, this is just like painting a, a, a landscape because the light's changing and the color's changing, and you don't know which one you like the best, so it's a little confusing. But it's easier to start with still life, and all the great artists painted still life. They, they loved it as much as I do. So, let's go. Come see. Before we start painting, please notice that there are four lines on the side of the paper. What that represents is that I sided for the proportions of the bottle by finding that it was about four necks high. So that's what those lines are. That'll help you get your bottle in proportion. I'm finally ready to paint this uh, very detailed drawing. Uh, I'm really excited. The light just changed. The sun went down. It was just glorious a few minutes ago. But I'm still very happy about the highlights in the glass and the highlights in the bottle. And this lovely, lovely Elizabeth Crimson Cabernet wine color. I just absolutely love it. Um, I did save the white highlights. So you'll see how important they are. I'm going to paint all the darks. There's some, I can new, there's some new things in here. Uh, um, all of a sudden I'm seeing something I like and I don't know how to get it. This is how it goes. Maybe I'll start with this and then it's, it's like a landscape. It's, everything's changing because the light's changing. Um, but anyway, the thing about glasses and bottles is that because they're a hard surface, you have a lot of hard edges, and you definitely want to show them. There's some shapes, some beautiful shapes in the um, liquid because of the reflections on the glass. Um, as you can see what I see. Uh, right now, I'm just concerned about getting the value right. This, this is a very dark shape here I want to get in. I'm a little worried about the warm and cool in a minute. I'm very careful to save this little white highlight here. Um, you can see why we had to spend so much time on the drawing, because otherwise we would just be lost. 
color. I'm still looking for dark. <clears throat> Very nice and dark. This whole cabinet color is just so lovely and dark. Um, but one thing that I'm really focusing on, you know, is um, this um, um, warm and cool color, and but mostly the value. This is this is cooler, but it's also lighter. So let's see if I can get that. Even if I don't get quite the right color, if I can just get the value lighter, it's so beautiful. This is what makes painting fun. Spending hours drawing something and then getting to paint it finally and seeing the light. I'm lifting a little bit because it's a little too dark. Okay, there's a little bit of that color in here. Um, but this is why it's so much fun to paint from life. Because it's changing. Um, so it's a very lovely dark here. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that painting is just one shape next to another. Right now, I'm painting a dark line that I see on the edge of the glass, being careful to save the highlights. So see the highlights are so important. But right now there's a dark here, which is nice. It's changed. So now I'm just using um, cobalt blue and, um, and alizarin, that's it. Sort of, um, hmm. it's hard to say what I'm doing. Um, lovely shapes there. Yeah. But it won't look like glass if you don't keep the highlights. You have to protect them. If the darkest dark next to the lightest light, it makes it look like glass. You'll see that. There's a little light right there. Right there is light. And then here's this beautiful kind of moon shape down here. A dark one here all of a sudden. Hmm. Hmm. This is a lot like landscape painting because the um, the shadows and the color are changing as the sun goes down. It's supposed to have consistent lighting, but uh, I open the drapes and I like what I saw better than anything I have seen all day. I'm going to use this while I have it on here. This is uh, just probably just the right color for this. This is a lizard with a little bit of blue in it. Because this is really dark. Just, I just saw something. There's a reflection of this in here. I don't know if I can get it. Oh, you see, when you're excited about getting something, um, you don't have time to think, which is a good thing. I'm going to put a little bit of blue over this because it's so dark to watch. Because it's really, it's just mixing on the paper. Um, I'm 
might as well get get it the right value the first time, especially now while it's still wet. Darker at the bottom even than it is in the first house. Okay, now this whole this whole section here is just a little darker at the bottom and then um I'm not gonna try to put the reflection in it. Oh, I'm tempted. <laughs> Maybe I'll try. I see the little uh, a line here. Well, it might make a nice little shaping. It could be anything. <clears throat> but what it is, it's a reflection of the little tiny version. Keep the line, the lines of the um, liquid. Keep that a definite line. Okay, then I'm going to make this. <clears throat> um, I'm going to make this thin side um, a little. A little bit different color than under here. Hmm. What is it? Oh, here we go. I see. There's a, this is a reflected light right here, and it's. I'm going to paint that in blue. Watch this. This is so fun. There's a, um, there's, it's sort of blue, it's more like green, actually. See the inside of the, let me put, make it green. Um, right in here, it's so beautiful, it's very, very green. <clears throat> um, so, what I was getting at was that there was a reflection in the water, in the water, in the wine, the top, with a, um, it's still, it's still red, um, but it's affected by the green above it. So I'm going to put that in now, and then, um, put this whole, um, inside of this label in there. See what it's, it's just one spot of color, one shape of color next to another. See what's happening is. So now I'm gonna mix the red, the alizarin, over, over this. It's very dark, so I think I might put another layer on. Okay, here we go. This is darker than I have it. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna drag it across here and see how it's affected uh, the color that was under it. There we go. So that, that's what I see. I see this reflected in, in the red. But you still see the um, this is a definite line. Okay. Um, things are changing. <laughs> Okay, let me put it. Um, right here has been this white cloth, has been the most beautiful green. I'm going to put it in now. And even here, it's sometimes. Hmm. It's actually more yellow, more yellow. No, I'm talking to myself. Um, I want to talk to you. Okay. So I'm having fun. I'm painting whatever color I see, knowing that it's 
going to change. It changes as we speak. Next, um, there is a, it's not a, it's a line here, not what it is, but I'm going to paint this dark face in here, I'm not sure what color. Um, it doesn't matter, as long as it's dark. I'll start with this, there's no wine up here, um, it's the background that, um, I mean, you'll see how I talk so much about mixing on the paper. That's what we're going to do now. This is, um, all of this is about the same color. I'm pretty blue over the alizarin then sort of a lavender color but I want to be sure that it's dark but not too dark hmm. I think I'll put some green just for here and how much I love phthalo green I'll put phthalo green over this now that I put this down, I see that what I'm looking at is much cooler. So I'm just going to put the green over the whole thing. And then the top part is definitely more green. So up here, I'm going to make this really dark, but being sure to save the highlights. Hmm, let me keep that. There's a lot of transparency going on here. Whoops. I almost lost my white. Could it be a little bit up in here? I don't know. Hmm, there's definitely a highlight here. Very dark on the top. So we'll start with this, save the light highlight. Um, it's a little dark here. make it much darker, very dark up there. It's in the green family, but it's almost black. is um this is dark and it's warmer but it's still it's still too um too warm so i'm going to put this green right over the whole thing i mean it looks kind of spotty right now so but it won't it won't look that way when i'm done more of a neutral color. 
And so it did. So, as much as I like the green, it still is too green. So I'm going to put some red. I'm going to show you that I have red in the hand here. I put a little red over this green just to neutralize it so it's not so green. It's still in the green family. So that's good. Let's see. See how they're beginning to go together now? The green is not so green. The red is not so red. They're, um, they're in the family. The red and green family. Oops, that was a mistake. <clears throat> but watch how I can fix it. Let's go like this. Make sure I get my straight line back. Yeah. Better than it was. You know, like it. <clears throat> so I'm having to um, make this not too blue, not too green, not too red by mixing on the paper. So I think we're going to have to stop here in a minute. Um, so I can take a look at it. I think that's still too red, too red. So, but I want it to be dark. So by taking this pure green, put right over there. Hmm, I saw a little, I saw the most lovely little reflection of that color. Oh my gosh, you can watch. Very dark right now. Um, Hawthorne on painting says to paint and, and let it get away from you, and that's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> I'm adding a little green up here to this blue, it's too blue. There we go, we got all kinds of nice colors. But you see how I'm just making one decision after another. But mostly I'm really concerned about keeping my whites. The highlights are going to make all the difference. There's a lovely highlight here. Right here. So I want to be sure and stay that. And one way I can do it is by putting a very dark thing next to it. See that right there? That's very dark. Here's another highlight. A little dark there. So then the, the highlights really stand out. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, I do have to be careful because the glass the glass goes over the bottle. Okay, the bottle is still a little too red in there. Because <clears throat> I don't want this to look like there's any wine in it. This is where the wine is. This is this is just very dark and goes back. So actually, this up here is dark. Oh, I know what to do. Watch. I'm, I'm putting right above this. I'm going to make this even darker. That would look. But this whole section is lighter than this one. That would look, I think. Let's see. So it's always about getting the value, right? Getting it dark enough. Just keep adding paint. So it starts to dry out, and it's not dark enough, you can see. Let's put more on. And the highlights are a little bit too big. So just little, little tiny highlights, some of them. And this is wrapping around. I've got to get that back. The wrapping around look. There you go. 
So, oh, I'm just started something to tell you. The phrase painting is drawing, drawing is painting. It is, I'm still drawing, see? But most of you saw what, how much better that is now that that's darker, nice, rich, dark. And this, this has all kinds of stuff going on. It's actually a little lighter. I'm going to take this out a little bit. First I wanted that to be darker, but now it's lighter. I don't know if it ever was darker. And just lift it off and it has a nice luminous look to it. So you see what I'm getting at? If you, you're more interested in getting your values right and the color temperature right, and you don't spend too much time second guessing yourself. You can have fun. Have fun doing this. This is not a dog, so I didn't get it out. Now, let's take a break. I did. There, there is some of this blue uh, background echoed in the, the little bit in here, just to hear. We're going to have um, light against dark here, so I'm going to start with the dark on the edges and then have it but here I want it dark because I want it dark. I'm putting some violet in here too. So this is very dark down here. <clears throat> but then it gets lighter up here because I want this to be light against dark and dark against light. Then there's a couple of shadows um, in the drapery, and we can do just about that. Oh, I know. I wanted to put. Um, A little bit more here, there's a, um, an accent on the um, outside of the skin here. I want this to be a very crisp line here. We're not supposed to say, how do I paint glass? Because we're never really um, painting anything. <clears throat> we're only painting shapes and color and all that, which creates the illusion of glass. But if you want the illusion of glass, you're going to have to have some very hard, dark edges next to some very light Their accents again, just a little bit. Just a little bit of this one. I'm just putting a few that last little detail in here. <clears throat> I think it would be good to uh, echo a little bit of some of this color in the background. Um, we have plenty of room here for variation. I'm just putting a little crimson over the background here because I want this to be darker. <clears throat> I think it should be more the blue green that we've been using. Put, put the blue green back over that. We need a nice rich dark here. A 
I did want to uh, paint the label. That's like a little happy accident there. I'm not sure what to do about that. Leave it alone. <clears throat> but this I want to um, put a little bit of color right here. A little variation in color. Okay, I think that's it. I quit. idea although the photograph is different because I started off with the same setup but by the time I finished it the light was coming in the window and changed everything but then the best part was the day I painted it it was the light was so beautiful and it was changing so getting from the picture but you can you can improvise I mean you can improve the, the photograph don't try to make it look like the photograph the photo, this is a good example. I took a photograph of it, but I, it came out differently with different lighting. So as long as you have your form, as long as you have lights and darks, you can change the color. Besides that, you see color, everyone sees color a little differently. Wow. That Emerson said something like, each of us testify to a different ray of light. And I think it applies to, to painting. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it means more than that, but but it means that if you're standing next to me and we're looking at the same apple, you really do see something different than I do. So paint what you see, that's, that's the goal. Whatever you see, trust it, put it down, see if you like it. But you can't really mess around with the values too much. You have to have, find, you have to find the light, light medium and dark values so you'll have some form when you're all done. But color, pretty subjective. So, so people say, well, what color is it? Well, I don't know. What do you see? That's this thing called the prismatic color theory. Because it actually lends itself to painting with light. It's transparent. It, you, can, it, you mix on the paper, as I want you to do. That's just like overlays of tissue or film or light. Beautiful. If you want it pale, you use more water if you want it thick. But you saw how many coats of dark blue. All I had was, uh, what it, the crimson is almost black. It's, it's really dark. But what's nice about it is if you mix them on the paper, that when they dry, there's some um, vibration going on between the two colors. Pretty pretty. And you notice how I lifted off the color in the middle of the bottle? It was just too dark. And so I just... I, I saw red and I saw green, I saw all, saw all those colors. But by the time I got the top of the bottle dark enough, I saw that I needed to lighten it. So it's, nothing is sealed in stone. People say watercolor is hard, but 
You, you can do you can do all kinds of things. Lifting is one of them. So you saw how it was always sort of on the edge. I mean, the whole time, I'm just looking at what I see and I'm asking myself, what now? I mean, there's no formula. That's the fun of it. I, I think that's how it should be. So every time I sit down, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> I'm not sure I can do this. Because <laughs> that's the attitude that we really have. You really don't know how to do it because every situation is totally unique. And I have dreaded doing it or teaching any kind of formula that will make you feel safe. <laughs> I don't want you to feel safe. I want you to be scared all your life, just like me. Turns out. <laughs> and you kind of felt you didn't do it, you know. But, but the focus that it takes, the focus that it takes to, to be asking what next all the time is really a good place to be. I mean, you really focus in the zone, kind of, not thinking too much. You heard me talking, but that's just how I'm thinking. Well, I just realized now that that's what I'm saying, what next? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll try that, see if it works. <laughs> and then if it doesn't, you just say it's a happy accident. <laughs> You've solved all those problems, but um, I think it's good to know that it's a process. It's a process and Somebody doesn't have it. Somebody doesn't have the secret they're holding, they're keeping from you. If you see it and you enjoy seeing it and you enjoy looking at it and you're asking what next and you try this, you try that, I'll bled into that little white strip on the bottle. Um, oh, I mean, too bad. 